right. Hello, I'm Mary Beth McLaughlin, the facilitator for today's SCORE workshop. Thank you all for coming and joining us today at SCORE Maine. Welcome to our webinar called Farm Business Planning, What Should I Change? We have to give a big thank you to Maine Cheese Guild for making this event possible. We will be responding to questions as they arise. Uh, if you have any questions, please post your question in the chat window, or you can push the raise your hand button on the Zoom, on the Zoom link. Today, we have Steve Giese presenting this important topic. Steve is the main district director for SCORE. He's been providing technical assistance to small businesses in Maine for over 15 years. Steve is a leading presenter of agricultural specific business education workshops for farmers and ranchers around the state. Welcome, Steve. Thank you, Mary Beth. Um, and uh, thank you all for uh, attending today. Um, and we'll get started here momentarily, but I do want to uh, uh, offer Ron Dyer from the Cheese Guild an opportunity to, uh, to say a couple of words if he'd like to. Um, this is our first uh, collaboration between SCORE and the Cheese Guild to offer some educational content. And uh, some of you are Cheese Guild members and some are not. So Ron, maybe you wanna just mention what the Cheese Guild uh, is about. Right. And uh, yeah, first... yeah, go first ahead. Steve. No, no, I really appreciate you and your team and working with you guys is just a joy. I gotta tell everybody, it makes you make it very easy to work on these kind of things. And we've been trying to plan this for a couple of years and we're finally finally getting going here. And I, I think it's the beginning of a, of a uh, maybe a series or something. We can talk about it in the future if it goes well. But I've, I've been really working with my Cheese Guild members on focusing on business planning as a key aspect of their farms and their, their processes. And it seems like there's a gap there in some cases and people have really jumped on it and been very supportive of us focusing on it. And SCORE has such a great reputation for helping people with these kind of things that I think this is a natural fit. So I won't do too much more than to say we, we, we're, we're a growing organization. We're excited about the future for cheese and dairy in Maine. It, there's a lot of headwinds, but we don't give up. And uh, we appreciate you guys helping us get there. So thank you, Steve and Mary Beth and your whole team. All right, you're very welcome. Thank you for, uh, thank you for collaborating with us. Uh, so I'm gonna share my screen and start the let's see just bear with me a second while i get this onto a slideshow there we go okay so um okay so just a little bit about uh score um for those of you who may not be familiar with us um we offer uh free uh confidential mentoring uh, services and free workshops to uh, people uh, who are starting or in business across the uh, country. And in Maine, we have uh, 125 uh, mentors, uh, all volunteers, and we have several ag experience mentors on our team. We're a resource partner of the SBA, which means uh, we get funding from them. Um, and uh, there on the bottom of the screen is the, uh, is, are the uh, links to our uh, website um, if you are looking to connect with us directly or to me uh, personally as the presenter. So um, the kinds of free uh, ag mentoring services that we do in, uh, in Maine, uh, among them are, are these uh, listed on the page. Um, we help people with SWOT analyses. We, uh, we do a lot of business planning assistance and financial projections. We assist with loan applications. We help people figure out what their capital needs are and, and where they can uh, try to identify sources of that money. Um, we work with people on marketing plans, growth strategies. Um, in today's environment, there's more and more HR challenges um, and employment uh, challenges. So we help people with those. Um, and then just kind of uh, generally with farm business management. So generally, you can see that we're working in the area of uh, business and financial uh, expertise as opposed to uh, the technical expertise. So we're not going to come to a farm and tell them how to uh, uh, um, protect their uh, crops against uh, the latest pest 
um, and that sort of thing. That's cooperative extension and others. And we, we do not try to uh, work in those areas. Um, so for the next few minutes, I want to talk about farm business planning. Um, and this is the outline of what we're going to talk about this morning. Who, you know, who needs farm business planning? Um, I'll give you my views on that. Um, we're going to talk about the business plan elements in a typical business plan. And we'll talk a little bit about pre-start business. But the main focus of this uh, workshop will be um, item four and five here, which is, you know, in business planning, which is more about what I should change on my farm than it is about, um, uh, you know, the basic comprehensive plan. And then enterprise planning. Um, so many farms, when I talk to uh, farmers that are new to me, I ask them what kind of farm they have, and, and the answer is often diversified, right? So that what that means is they have multiple enterprises, and so it's really important that people think about their businesses in terms of the, in terms of the enterprises. I'm really, I can't listen. Okay. Um, yeah, if, if people could mute, um, unless they have a question to put forward, that would be helpful. Thank you. Um, and so that's uh, generally what we're going to talk about this morning. So, um, so who needs a, a farm business plan? Well, the primary purpose, uh, the person who needs a farm business plan is the farm owner or farm owners, right? It's a tool for you. It's a roadmap about where you, where you want to go. And it's a way to formalize your thinking. So that's the primary reason. Often people think about farm business planning because they're, uh, they're about to, to go to, uh, to the bank or some other source. Um, and uh, yep. let me just do that real quickly. Excuse me. One of the challenges of the home office. Um, so, um, um, so it's prim it's it's primarily for you, the farm, uh, the farm owner, the farm business owner, and uh, secondly, it's it's for your business partners, right? Family members, often, uh, maybe it's a spouse, maybe it's a son or a daughter. Um, th you know, third down the list is are the lenders, right? So um, they're not at the top of the list, even though sometimes people think they are. And uh, so that's that's what's really important here is you're doing this because it's a, a tool for you as the uh, as the business owner. And of course, if you have investors in the farm uh, business, whether it's uh, uh, friends and family or other investors, uh, they're going to need to know what the plan is. So what goes into a business plan? Um, the key, uh, just a quick run through the key elements, a SWOT analysis. So we view this as a uh, the, really the plan, the foundation for your business plan. Um, and SWOT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Um, and uh, um, so, you know, having gone through this uh, sort of disciplined approach of of identifying what the strengths are and, and weaknesses are and opportunities and threats. You've really got the, uh, the business plan almost half done in my opinion. So it's a, it's a very useful exercise. The business plan includes a business description, um, you know, your land and facilities. So how many tillable acres you have, how many wooded acres you have, how many acres of wetlands you have. Uh, your facilities, uh, things like your know, barns and sheds and hoop houses and and uh, processing facilities and uh, your water supply. A really important element is water supply these days um, in terms of uh, in terms of the farms. Um, and then um, you know the crops. How many acres of what types of crops are you going to grow? How many animals will you grow? Um, 
what what markets will you sell your products in and legally how are you organized are you an llc are you a sole proprietor are you a um an s corp um so all of those things are in the uh, um, business description owner background and experience um this is this is important is particularly important if you're um, uh, seeking a loan the fsa requires you know, very specifically, certain amounts of experience before they will um, underwrite a loan for you. Um, and most other lenders will as well. Uh, they, they want to be assured that you have the rec requisite experience to be able to uh, successfully run the business. Um, Short-term goals. It's important in the planning process to establish your goals for the next 12 to 24 months. So we're not talking about five to 10 year goals. You know, those might be, those are good to have in mind, but for the business plan, what you really need is what you're going to try to accomplish in the next 12 to 24 months. Um, and these are goals about growth. Uh, you know, how much do you want to grow your business? Which enterprises do you want to focus on? Um, what are you going to do to improve your profits? Um, are you going to change some, um, you know, changes in your production? Um, processes. Uh, maybe you're going to add some value-added um, products. Um, so all of these things get you know covered in your um, in your goals and and your business plans. These days, uh, your labor plans are pretty important. So is it uh, you and your spouse, spouse or partner? Is are you who's going to work full time on the farm and who's going to work part time on the farm? Do you have, will you require uh, hired outside help or not? And if you do, where will you find those people? Um, and uh, in today's environment, sometimes the question comes up, where will you house them? Um, so your labor plans are important. Uh, identifying your ideal customers. So who are you trying to sell your products to? Who are most interested in your products? Is it, is it millennials or is it uh, senior citizens? Or is it both? But understanding who your ideal customer is will help you determine how you should plan for um, doing your, your marketing. Um, you know, who, who's your competition and how is your farm unique? You need to have something that differentiates you. You can't just be the same as everyone else and, and, and claim that you're better. You need something that uh, differentiates you. Uh, continuing on with the business plan elements, you've got an operational plan, who's responsible for what. So it's important here to recognize that um, there's not enough time in the day for you to do everything most often. And or perhaps you're not good at everything as well. Um, and so it's, and that's okay. Um, but it's important to identify who's going to do what and just make sure that somebody is available to do things like the sales and marketing or handling the finances. Um, these are a couple of areas that uh, many farm owners aren't as comfortable with or don't particularly like to do. Um, the marketing plan, how will you reach those ideal customers? So if you're talking about millennials, you're probably not gonna do a whole lot of newspaper advertising, right, to try to reach them. So it means social media. Well, do you know how to do social media? Is there somebody on your team who does if you don't and so forth? So that's all part of the marketing plan. Um, record keeping. Do you use QuickBooks or some other system for keeping track of things? And um, QuickBooks is not the only solution. What's really important is that you have some kind of system for keeping track of your income and expenses as you go along rather than just pulling it together once a year for the tax man. Um, do you have somebody who, um, and so this is another area where often is there a family member who can help with this if it's not your area of strength. Um, <clears throat> but you need somebody who's gonna be responsible for your taxes that's a reliable person. You need some kind of management reports so that you know how things are going on your farm. Um, cash flow, a monthly cash flow, um, is, is really important, especially for, uh, startups, but farming is such a seasonal business that a monthly cash flow is important because as you all know, 
um, during the spring and early summer, um, you're investing large amounts into your farm and the uh, the payback doesn't come for several months later. So if you're if you're doing vegetables, right, you're uh, um, you have a lot of input costs up front in the spring. You you've got a lot of labor costs through the early part of the summer um, as you're nurturing and, and uh, bringing your crops along. And finally, late summer and fall, um, the cash flow starts to come in. So it's important to know what your monthly cash flows are. Um, the balance sheet and the capital, these are things you need to know about, especially uh, if you need additional capital, um, where is it going to come from? How much do you need? Um, and, uh, you know, the timing of it is as important as, as the acquisition of the capital, right? If, if you need the capital to buy a new piece of equipment for the coming season, you need that capital uh, soon, as opposed to having that loan approved in, in August or September. Um, and lastly, the key metrics for managing your business. So things like uh, crop yields and animal yields and, and multiple year uh, records, right? So if you're, uh, if you're raising uh, um, beef cows, it takes two years to get them from start to uh, finish. If it's fruit trees, it takes uh, several years and, and so forth. And your enterprise data, which we'll talk a little more about. So the, the case for a uh, business plan is that a well-done business plan uh, defines what you want to accomplish, right? It's, it's your goals, your profits, and, and your draws. I think it's important to identify uh, up front as part of your business planning what you need from your farm business on a monthly basis to pay your personal bills. Those are your draws. Um, a well-done business plan clarifies your thinking. What will you grow and raise? And where will you sell it? And what do you want to charge for it? All, all planning uh, points. Um, it, the, the business plan also sets expectations for you and for others, particularly other family members or maybe lenders um, and investors. The business plan uh, identifies opportunities and how to exploit them. So it's, it's important, most businesses have some opportunities in front of them and they need a plan of how they're going to exploit those opportunities and take advantage of them. Um, it identifies challenges. Most businesses have challenges and there needs to be a plan for ways to overcome those challenges. Um, so maybe it's, uh, maybe it's equipment. You don't have some of the equipment you need. Maybe you don't have enough capital. Um, Maybe you've got marketing challenges or a key new competitor, which is eating into your market share. So each one of these challenges is something during the planning process that you need to think through and identify um, what you're going to do to address those challenges. Um, the business plan is the place where you set your priorities for the new year. That would be your goals and objectives. Um, and not just broad sweeping goals and objectives, but supporting tactics that go along with them. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, and lastly, the business plan is the place where you do some projection of the financial performance. So will you be paid? And so this is where you really need to be honest with yourself about how much do I need from the farm business to pay my bills? Is it a thousand a month or is it a thousand a week? Right, so it's that's a that's a big difference, and it, it's important to identify that uh, up front so that you plan accordingly in your business plan. So now I want to transition to uh, talk more about in business planning and and what should I change. So <clears throat> the way to go about that, in my opinion, is is to start with taking a look back at the year just completed. Um, was 2023 a good year for your farm? Um, <coughs> excuse me. Did it exceed your expectations? And your expectations are your plan or your budget. And, and if yes, if it did exceed your expectations, why? And is it sustainable? Or was it a blip 
um, because you received a grant, for example. If you received a big grant in 2023, then 2023 looks like a pretty good year, but that's that's a non-recurring grant. And so that's not really a sustainable uh, business. It's important to get the grant and it's great, but you know, how do you sustain your business um, with, with a one-time grant? You can't. So um, if 2023 was not a really great year, um, why not? So this is really important. You need to be able to, to drill down and to know and identify why 2023 was not a great year, because this then leads you to the things that uh, you may want to change for the coming year. So this is kind of a laundry list of, of things, for example, the kinds of things that that might come into your um, analysis of why 2023 was not a great year. And each one of these will inform you of changes that are needed in your business for the new year. So, you know, maybe you had a late start to the season because of, uh, of a late, uh, late frost or, uh, or late snow melt, or um, it was just too wet during the uh, early part of the season, or, um, you know, some summers we've had drought and some summers we've had too much rain. Um, not that you can necessarily, uh, you can't change the weather pattern, but um, maybe you can choose some things to change your dependence on it in some small way. Um, you know, was it because your production yields were lower than hoped for? And if that was the case, why is why were they lower? Um that then identifies something you need to do something about. Maybe you'll conclude your selling prices were too low. So that leads you to, well, where did, where did you sell your products? How did you set the prices? Um, is there room for uh, making changes in the new year? Maybe you had insufficient uh, cash flow uh, because of high cost of inputs or, you know, machinery, um, requirements or machinery breakdowns that were unanticipated or because of labor costs. Uh, labor is such a big cost element these days that um, that can really cause quite a variation in your um, in your cash flow uh, from month to month. Um, maybe lack of capital um, you know was a problem on your farm this year um, or last year and Maybe the capital was eventually available, but it wasn't available when needed. That's another kind of a problem. So if you're a fruit farm and you and you need a new sprayer, that needs to happen in the early part of the season, not not the, not in the fall after the season's over, right? So the timing is important. Labor, um, too little labor or too much. So this is a huge issue. Um, turnover. Late hires, uh, you know, you, you had a maybe you had a plan that you were going to hire somebody starting uh, starting in June, um, but as it played out, you weren't able to get somebody on board until you know um, July or August. Um, that has a significant impact on your farm, um, or maybe you carried somebody through the off season from the prior year because they were you know a great employee. All of these things, you know, really have an impact on, on your year and your results and may or may not cause you to uh, want to change something on the farm. Personal or family illness, um, you know, so the list goes on and on. Um, over on the right-hand side, maybe you planted too many acres or too few acres of, of uh, a particular crop or you raised too many uh, a beef animal or too many pork um, and uh, or too few um but enterprise mix and we'll talk a little bit more about that um but not all enterprises contribute equally and so it's important to to look at when you're doing this retrospective look to look at your enterprises to determine what what contributed well and and what did not contribute as as well um maybe there was insufficient risk mitigation so you know, things like uh, fire insurance, crop insurance, um, or maybe you, you only had a single crop, which was strawberries. And um, if there's a uh, hailstorm, 
and you and you lose uh, you lose your crop, um, you, you're you're really destroyed your economics for the whole year. Um, and the last one, the bottom on the right is the red is uh, you're not sure what the cause is. This is a big this is a big deal. You really need to know. You need to figure it out uh, because that's what will help you drive the things that you need to change. So how was 2023 for your farm? Um, I suggest that you need to write it down. It's not, you need a little more structure than just thinking about it. I mean, you all have some anecdotal thoughts about, you know, how last year turned out and why it turned out the way it did. But I think it's, uh, it's a useful exercise to write it down, even if it's just in simple bullet points um, as to what happened last year. So these are some of the questions that you would want to try to answer. What, um, you know, what, uh, what went really well? You want to do more of that this year, obviously. With hindsight, what could you have done better? You know, we all have, uh, we all have some of these things uh, that we could have done better. And so when you're doing your personal business plan, it's, uh, it's really a good time to be honest about you know, what could I have done better and what am I going to change for the new year? Which enterprise generated the best result um, and which enterprise generated the weakest results? You need to know this so that you're focused on the right changes for the new year. And remember what I'm talking about, you know, results for enterprise, I'm talking about which uh, enterprise is netting the most not which is selling the most. So sometimes people mix those up a little bit and they think the enterprise is doing well because it's selling a lot of product. But what we're talking about here is, you know, what are we making the profits from? So that's an important distinction um, to make. And then, uh, you know, a point here, uh, you you don't really need to go it alone. This This is a good place to talk with a trusted advisor or a mentor about your assessment of 2023 and and uh, have some conversation around your assessment and and uh, and they can help you think through some of the issues that you've identified. So um, benchmarking, <clears throat> it's important to track your progress. So um, and that means things like comparing uh, to your own prior year data. Um, so, uh, that's, that's really key is that you compare your 2023 data to your 2022 data and see, you know, where things improved and were made better. Um, and, uh, um, and you can track, you can see your progress. So it's, uh, that's one sort of benchmarking. Another is to compare to your 2023 plan. Um, so you made a plan for a year ago and, and uh, how did it work out? Did you do better than plan? Um, did you do worse than plan? And how do you evaluate that? So just to add a little um, perspective to that um, in, in terms of comparing to your plan, if, if revenues are 100,000 and net income is 10,000 on your farm, is that good? Well, it depends on your expectations, doesn't it? If you expected net income of 20,000 and you only had a net income of 10,000, uh, that's not so good. That's, that's a disappointing year. If on the other hand, you expected net income of 5,000 and your actual result on this uh, farm was 10,000, then you did better than expected. That's good. It's still not a huge number, but it's it's a better than your expectation. So that's how you use this information. Um, if you expected a net loss of ten thousand dollars and you ended up breaking even, um, yes, that's not that's not a profit, but it's it's much better than what you expected the year was going to come out like. And so it's important to to you know apply the perspective of what your expectations were going in to evaluate how the year turned out. And then another part of benchmarking is to compare to other farms, um, particularly to other farms like you. So 
a vegetable farm should be comparing to a vegetable farm, fruit to fruit, beef to beef, you know, and, and so forth. And there are places where you can uh, uh, do some of this benchmarking. Farm Credit East has a, um, a benchmarking service they actually uh, um, provide. Um, <coughs> so if that's something you were interested in, you could talk with them about it. Um, it's not a free service, but it's a it's a valuable service because you can get benchmarked against uh, other comparable farms. And then there's something called this uh, Farm Finance Scoreboard. And I'm going to try to click on this link real quick. Yeah. So this um, this little scoreboard, for those of you who like numbers, this is, this is put out by the uh, University of Minnesota. And, um, and this is a, this is available online. It's free. You, you'll, so you'll have this link when uh, we send you the slides. Um, but it's, it's a way to, uh, um, we're not, we're not seeing it, Steve. Oh, okay. Maybe I need to, I may need to stop sharing my initial screen. Hold on a minute. Um, here we go. All right. Okay. So this is, this is put out by University of Minnesota and I'm not going to go through this thing in any detail, but essentially, um, they've, they've got, a number of different uh, um, financial ratios here that you can calculate. And the, the, this thing does, you know, all the definitions for what goes in each ratio is, is included in this document. But we're just gonna take one simple one. So the liquidity ratio, the very first one up there, your current ratio. So if you're, I'm gonna give you an example. If your current assets were 200,000, and your current liabilities were 100,000, that would give a current ratio of 2.0. And when you go over to the, uh, to the red, yellow, green, so this is kind of a stoplight system, right? The red is, is kind of the, uh, the stop you know, problem area. Um, the yellow is a cautionary area and, and the green is strong. So in, in the example I was just giving you, if the current ratio is 2.0, your farm is over in the category of uh, just entering into the strong category. And one particular ratio doesn't, you know, doesn't mean a lot in and of itself. But if you, if you did these uh, for your farm um, and, uh, and you were mostly in the green or the yellow, you should be feeling pretty good about how your farm is performing. If you were mostly in the red, then there's some, some challenges that need to be addressed. So it's just a, it's just a, um, another way. And it's been uh, developed by um, the ag people at the University of Minnesota. So there's a lot of input that went into this um, as a way of uh, helping you sort of evaluate some of your farm performance. So now I'm gonna go back to the presentation. Let's see here. Okay, we're back where I left off. Right here. here we go. Okay, so, um, Plans and expectations for 2024, the plan for 2024. So all of these um, um, plan elements go into uh, thinking ahead to the new year. Um, that doesn't mean that you need a comprehensive 20 page tome of a business plan. You need uh, you know three or four pages of a very summarized kind of uh, content for what you're planning to do. But your plans would include things like your your crops plan or your orchard plan, your livestock plan, um, your marketing plan, right? 
So marketing plan means, you know, what you're going to do with social media, your website, you know, farmers markets, um, and so forth. The labor plan, right? Uh, <coughs> when you need it, how many you need, what the pay rates are going to be, where you're going to find your labor supply. Uh, the financial plan, this is your revenue and profits and cash flow. Um, the capital needs plan. So this is both dollars and source of where you're going to get that capital from. And then an, an owner draw plan. So um, <coughs> give me just a minute. So it's important to uh, be honest with yourself about well, how much do you need from the farm uh, each month? If it's, is it 3000 a month? Is it 1000 a month? Is it 5000 a month? If you need 5000 a month and the farm is only going to expect it to generate 3000 a month, you've got a big problem. And so this is the time to address that is when you're doing the planning for the year. So, um, Plan ahead, doing the same thing you did in 23 and expecting a different result in 24 will probably fail. Um, you want to do more of the things that uh, uh, that went well and performed the best. You want to do less of the things that uh, did not perform well unless truly caused by a, a blip versus a trend. Um, so, you know, a blip would be something like if you were raising strawberries and and there was a hailstorm that destroyed your crop, that's a blip. Um, and so that's going to cause your finances to not look good relative to, stra to the strawberry enterprise. Um, but it can be explained by a blip as opposed to underlying market conditions or some other uh, change that needs to be addressed. Um, your planning ahead means you need to have really figured out what opportunities you're going to exploit and how you're going to exploit them. So it's, and those opportunities will be things that distinguish you or things that you're good at, not necessarily the things you like to do. So there's a difference sometimes between the things you're good at and the things you like to do. Um, and here again, is a good place to consult with a trusted advisor or a mentor about your plans for 2024, um, cause they will help you think it through. Um, so that's a, that's a good place to uh, to work with somebody, uh, you know, from SCORE or other uh, trusted advisor. So um, I've only got uh, two or three more slides here, and then we're going to wrap up and maybe take some questions. So you need to plan with specifics. Um, it's not enough to say I'm going to increase my revenue or I'm going to decrease my cost. You need to be more specific about, I'm going to grow five more acres of, of uh, you know, the XYZ crop, or I'm going to raise 10 more beef cows this year um, than I did last year. Uh, I'm going to increase my yields. I'm going to sell at higher prices. Well, this requires planning as to, you know, how you're going to do that, where you're going to do it, um, how you'll introduce the price increase um, and how you'll explain it. How, what, how do you need to change your story um, in terms to justify that, uh, that price? Um, maybe you're going to access, uh, you know, additional sales channels. So um, maybe you're going to start selling at farmer's markets that you haven't been doing. Maybe you're going to add a farm store. Uh, maybe you're going to start doing some e-commerce. Um, maybe you're going to create some value-added products. Um, so processed foods, you know, cheese is a, it was a top of the list. Um, but things like, you know, syrup and pickles and baked goods and uh, uh, meat cuts versus selling sides, you know, is a, are value added products that, that can help move you up the, uh, um, the economic chain. Adding a new enterprise. Um, and then, and then there's things that you, perhaps you're going to do on the, uh, the cost side as well to lower your costs. Um, are there ways to lower your input prices, um, decrease or eliminate a low performing enterprise. So this is, this is really important. And in the next slide, I want to sort of illustrate the point about enterprises a little bit uh, more. Um, can you defer some maintenance expenses? 
Can you share some expenses with uh, another producer? So a, a shared piece of equipment is is a, an example of, of a way to share some expenses with another producer. Um, so um, limiting capital spending, right? A new pickup truck is nice, but you know it takes a lot of capital for that. Um, is it is it really necessary to do it at this point in time? So um, this slide illustrates uh, sort of the problem with uh, with enterprise uh, profitability that is sort of hidden in many farms. So in this particular sample farm, uh, the total farm, first column of numbers there, the total revenue is 80,000, the total expenses are 60,000, the net profit is 20,000. That's, you know, that's not so bad. Um, $20,000 profit on $80,000 of sales. Um, but when you look at the two enterprises that make up this farm, you can see the problem. The orchard is generating good profits on, on its sales, but the farm store is losing money. And this is why it's important to drill down and understand your enterprise profitability. I mean, imagine this uh, slide if there are four or five enterprises instead of just two. It's kind of oversimplified here because there's only two. But when there are four or five, it gets even more complicated. So it's important to, uh, to really understand what's going on in the enterprises. So, you know, to increase my farm profitability, what should I do? Well, you need to do the things that are most attainable for one thing. But in this example, um, you might say, um, I'm going to I'm going to have more fruit trees. Or I'm going to close the farm store. Those those certainly would change the uh, overall economics. Um, I'm going to um, but maybe you can uh, raise your prices um, and sell more. Right. Or maybe you can lower your expenses for, uh, you know, for the products in the uh, farm store. So if you're buying um, uh, items into the farm store, maybe you're paying too much for them. Maybe you're buying some products you shouldn't bother with. Um, maybe the farm store is uh, is open too many hours and you're you're paying too much for labor. Um because the farm store hours you're open seven days a week and maybe you should only be open uh three or four days a week so this is why it's important to um to look at the enterprise um budgets and, and figure out how you can change things to improve the overall um you know another possibility would be lowering the expenses for the fruit operation so you're making thirty thousand there, but you know maybe you could make thirty five thousand. So um, this is uh, it's, it's really important to get into the enterprise uh, profitability. Um, <clears throat> there's a technique called a partial enterprise budget that uh, that uh, people are starting to use to try to uh, evaluate the impact of alternative changes. So, um, so if you're going to make a change, like, you know, here's some examples on this page, you know, you're going to add an enterprise or hire an employee or, you know, and so forth, um, you, you need to identify, well, what is the impact of that? You don't need to do a complete farm budget to evaluate a change that you're doing. You, you need to evaluate the impact of the change. So will it increase revenues by, and if so, by how much? Will it decrease expenses? And if so, by how much? And when I deduct the uh, those those two and offset where appropriate, is there an, an increase in net profit? And that's the way to, uh, to try to evaluate this. So um, adding a new enterprise, there's going to be new revenues, but there will also be new costs. So is it profitable or not? Hiring an employee, well, the costs are clear. But what about the benefits? So you need to be able to articulate and, and identify what benefits you'll have from increasing, uh, you know, adding an employee or adding a part-time employee. Um, and likewise with changing production methodology or buying a piece of equipment. Um, 
there's a cost and there's a benefit and what's the net impact of those changes. And those, uh, you know, we just talked about this, it just gets summed up and what's the net overall impact. Um, so um, what should I change? Well, it depends on your situation. There's no magic bullet here. Um, you need to keep good records so that you're not guessing about what's the, um, you know, how am I doing in the various areas um, so that you're making informed decisions. You want to make changes that will have the greatest impact. So by putting financial analysis behind your thinking about changes, it, it will help you identify the things that have the greatest impact. Um, Value-added products is, is a consistent uh, positive impact in, uh, in many farm businesses um, because selling processed foods versus commodity products uh, uh, puts you in, in uh, a, a very different situation where you can be a price maker as opposed to a price taker and uh, um, it puts you in the driver's seat. Um, you want to make changes with a sufficient positive financial impact to compensate for the risk. And what I mean by this is uh, could be probably best illustrated by an example. If I buy a delivery van for 25000 and net income increases $1,000 per the year as a result, is that enough to, um, to compensate me for the risk of making that $25,000 investment? I would say no, it's not enough. But if the, if I'm, if the net income increases $10,000 based on my $25,000 um, investment in that delivery van, then it's clearly enough. So, you know, there's a way to kind of think through, is it worth the risk, the financial risk of making an investment for an improvement? How much is enough to uh, uh, cause you to um, incent you to make the change? The last couple of points here, you need to make changes that are supported by your family or business partners. Um, otherwise it's pretty high risk. Um, and changes that you have the managerial capacity to handle. So uh, a fruit farmer adding beef cows um, might not be a good idea if the person has no experience uh, raising beef animals. But whatever you do, you wanna make sure that the financial analysis supports it. So that's a really important concept to keep, keep in mind here. Changes often require capital. Um, you need to you need to plan ahead because it takes uh, time to get these uh, to get loans approved. You need to identify sources that understand farming, like Farm Credit East, uh, FSA, you know, some banks and some uh, uh, federal credit unions. Um, not all understand farming and and uh, will support it, but some will. Um, so you need to identify somebody who understands farming um, uh, to seek for your sources. Um, you want to access grant funding where possible, but it's not always available and it, and it almost always comes with restrictions. So, you know, a, a grant that's pretty restricted uh, might not be all that valuable to your business. So it's just because it's cash doesn't mean it's, it's uh, the panacea. Um, working capital and seasonal needs are another type of uh, um, capital that's important. Uh, for farms, and then long-term capital, having the right structure for you uh, long-term. And in summary, um, I'm going to circle back to the business plan is primarily for you, and you need it, uh, uh, and you need to do it every year, right? It's, uh, but it's not a comprehensive, you know, long, drawn-out process. It is a short process that works for your business and, and uh, documents the things that you want to do differently. You need to understand your financials. The financials are the universal language of business. You, if you're, you're in the farming business, you need to understand your, your financials. Um, review last year as a guide to you in planning changes. That kind of benchmarking is really important. Uh, I'm a proponent of write it down, um, just in simple bullet points. 
is good enough, but write it down because that helps crystallize your thinking around um, what, what you're doing, what you think you might need to do. And then planning ahead and projecting the financial impacts um, are an important part of the planning. And uh, lastly, don't go it alone. Seek assistance from SCORE, Cooperative Extension, FSA, Farm Credit, bankers, lots of others. So um, uh, there's there's people who can help with this. So um, I went on a little bit longer than I expected, but um, we do have a few minutes left. We can take some uh, questions if, if any of you have them. So I'm gonna stop the uh, sharing at this point. And do we have any do we have any questions or comments? Yes, I have a question. Uh, Please go ahead. Me. Yes. Um, so we run a uh, a most mostly a, a beef farm, but we do pork and chicken. Um, and as only about two years into actually the business, um, as far as a homestead, but now I'm moving to the business. So the biggest thing to that we're having um issues identifying is identifying profit and loss you know during growth time so we're building infrastructure we're building you know we're increasing size you know we went from two cows in 2020 to 30 you know the start of this year so um it's very hard to identify the profit as we continue to grow and our um you know as we're marketing we're continuing to be sold out so that's a good thing so we're just trying to identify where we should i guess set goals as we continue to sell out <laughs> yeah, so this, uh, um, um, excuse me. So uh, this is a challenge with uh, with businesses that are growing because the the investment that it takes to expand the business, it gets mixed in with uh, measuring current profitability. And I think it's it's probably important to, in your situation, to try to, um, identify, even though, you know, from your tax return standpoint, the, those expenses will all get recorded as expenses. It's important to identify what the expenses are that are sort of recurring operational type expenses and which expenses are really investments in the growth of the business. And, um, and to kind of separate those out so that when you're doing the planning, you can see that, you know, but for the investment in the expansion of the business, you know, our our beef operation is really profitable and the pork not so much or whatever the, you know, situation is. But I would try to identify those those uh, expansion costs and, and kind of set them aside when I'm doing the planning. Okay. Okay. Other okay. other comments or questions? Caitlin, oh, go ahead. You want to unmute yourself, Caitlin, and ask your question. No, I'm sorry. It must have wasn't wasn't the hand raised. Go ahead. Somebody else had a comment or question. Ron. Yeah, Steve, I Steve, I had a quick thing. Is is I liked your uh, first of all, I like the write it down part a whole lot. You know, what gets measured gets managed kind of concept, which I talk about a lot. Um, and I wondered for the for the small, I, I have a lot of very small enterprises in our in our main cheese guild. And how, how can that be like a real simple journal or something like write down how did 2023 go write down all your impressions? <clears throat> is it a spreadsheet? Or is it just the notes? Or what do you what kind of things do you see? Yeah, I think it's, uh, I think it's, uh, it can be any of those things. The, the point is to, to have a disciplined approach to do that, at least annually. Um, as you're assessing how did the year just ended go and and what should we change for the new year and uh, jotting those down in writing uh, in, in simple bullet points uh, can go a long way in terms of crystallizing your thinking about it. Very good. And then I had a second thing with the trusted advisors and mentors. I like that statement you made a couple of times there. I wondered if do you find people have them? Do people have people that they go to as you work with small businesses? Do they yes, all, if I said, yeah, go ahead. So, yeah, it's pretty, it's not everybody does, but um, uh, many, uh, many of them do. Sometimes it's a, it's a farmer friend um, that they've, they feel comfortable with and talking about their business with. Um, it could be their score advisor. It could be from somebody from cooperative extension. 
It could be their lender. Um, so could be any number of people. And <laughs> excuse me. And often it's not just one person. You know, they might be talking to a couple of different people about, you know, what they're what they're thinking about. And uh, because, that, you know, somebody to just kick these ideas around with is very helpful in ch sort of challenging your own thinking. Um, so it's that's why it's important. And and the mentors often are out and about seeing other situations in the marketplace that they can bring to the uh, table as well. Great. Thank you. Other comments, questions? Okay. Well, we've just about used up the uh, the hour uh, allotted. So I'd like to thank you all very much for uh, being here this morning. Um, I'd like to thank uh, um, Ron Dyer and the, and the Maine Cheese Guild for uh, co-sponsoring the uh, workshop this morning. And by all means, uh, reach out to uh, to someone at SCORE or, the, or Ron at the Maine Cheese Guild to talk about, you know, how you might get some assistance for your business. It's it's free and confidential. And uh, so um, that's a pretty good price. Thank you, Steve. Really appreciate it. Nice job. Really some great ideas and a lot to think about. Thank you. Uh, all right. Thank you very much. Have a good day, everyone. Cheers.